Gowi TV, informed economist and business perspective. Um, I think one very interesting point that came up from the professor's presentation, I don't know if it, it really rang a bell in, in our ears, was that um, the core of future ready skills that we we've been talking about here is because of the changing landscape of work which is very much influenced by the fourth industrial revolution. And I think the professor did a very nice job of elaborating on what the fourth industrial revolution is and um, how, how that's changing the landscape of work with technology and the merging of various technologies together, uh, which differentiates it from, of course, all the other previous, uh, uh, the first, uh, second and third uh, uh, industrial revolutions. Now, one other important thing that I think might be where we start this discussion from, is the fact that several of us, by the way, let me just ask by show of hand, how many of us in here consider themselves employers? You work, either you own a business, or you work uh, in a position where you recruit people in an organization. By show of hand, let me see. Okay, we have uh, quite a few employers. And I would assume that the rest consider themselves um, uh, employees or you know candidates for employment now it's interesting because what the professor told us was oftentimes when we think about future ready skills we think about huh how can young people have be relevant in the future right how can these people change and adapt to to to, to the needs of the future so that they are marketable so that they are competitive in the market but there's one thing that the professor brought up which is are we as employers actually future ready ourselves Right? How are we preparing ourselves as employers to be relevant in the future? And I think that's a very nice place to start from. And I like maybe if every single one of us here on the panel can just give uh, a few comments on that. Um, why do you think it's very important for employers to be prepared for the future, just as much as it is important for employees or candidates for jobs to also be prepared uh, for the future that we're talking about? Uh, maybe we'll uh, start with. Um, Madam Peruzzi, you can also do a short introduction of yourself and then proceed to the question, and then uh, the rest will follow. Y your question is touching me directly, because I'm also an employer. Uh, I think I see some of my colleagues back there, and yes, so it's very interesting. We came as a company, and when you say, how are we ready? Prof said it's not an option. So whether we were thinking that, okay, it's still far from us, we don't have option. And I think the readiness agenda is only not on employers, but employees. It affects both. So as we push, means uh, the employers will have to change to adapt because we are not serving ourselves, we are serving clients. Now, if our clients are changing into the technological world, then we are left with no option. So we have to adapt and change. Now that same push goes down to the rest of the room who say they're looking or they are either employees. Means everyone else is not safe in this game. So then what value do we bring in is to wake up, to coach each other, to support each other, and to say, hey guys, look here. It's not an option. We have no choice than actually to be ready for this. And not being ready, we're ready in it. So actually to wake up, stand and run and catch it up. So it's not an option. And everywhere you go, in every forums I attend, lately I've not had any forum without the, 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 the changes in technological world. So it's, it's not a choice. So as an employer, yes, without pointing fingers, I start with myself. I'm actually very ready and it's one of the key agendas we are looking into. So thank you so much. Thank you, thank you very much, Perizzi, for the uh, interesting insight. I think one other very important thing to note from what she was saying, uh, a reminder, again, just the why. We're, talking, we're still talking about why should we uh, be ready for, for, for the future? What, what's, what's at stake here? And I think one very important point she brings, which is a good reminder to employers, is that, uh, if I can use her own words, we're not here to serve ourselves. As employers, we have a responsibility to employees. So as we're talking, we're asking employees to have the skills that will help serve our institutions in the future, we should also create an environment that can enable these 
future um, uh, type of employees to be able to be effective in our workplace. And I think that's a very, very important point. It brings to mind something that we've talked about quite often in our work, which is employee value proposition. I think this is, I'm going to give this as a challenge to the audience. If we have any people in HR, one of the things you should be asking yourself is, what is my employee value proposition? What am I offering to people who come to work uh, in my space? And you know, I'm just going to leave that as a thought. Mr. James Rom. Uh, the topic is very interesting, and it is really the high time. Uh, I highly appreciate uh, the contribution of doctor, and uh, I think uh, one challenge, basically, we are currently facing is managing talent. Because currently, most of the organizations and employer, they are facing the staff movement from one organization to another organization. The issue of retaining become a problem. Why? This is because of the change of technology. And why? Because of the needed skill. If you find, as we support many organizations to recruit, it is very hard. Hard in the sense that we have many people graduated, but as what the presenter doctor said, that they need the soft skill. It's not the question of technical skill. Have a PhD, have a master's, the key thing is that after that, how do you come about to perform what the skill needed to achieve the main objective of organization as an individual and as a company? The challenge which you are facing is really needs, as the Tanzanians as well, the way ahead. We have many graduates, but they are jobless. If you are saying you're jobless, a graduate is really paining. Why? Because we still have a, a mindset. We are not coming from the box, whereby we feel that, yes, I'm a bachelor degree in business, in HR, in engineering, but engineering I can do marketing. HR can do sales. Why? Because you have a technical skill can help you to nurture your skill and to support the others. What we have noted in the, the market, is that every employer, if you have that rare skill needed within the business, it is because you take care and you improve. The staff engagement, how do you value your staff? If you look at most of the organization current in Tanzania, based on how consulting have done with a few, I mean, most of the organization, they are still not value the human capital as very important in their business. Because without human capital, that is the skill, you will not move. Why organizations are failing? It is because not of the machine, it's because of people. Why? They are not delivering what is required. Therefore, it is our time now, we are saying the world has come very small. If you want to do purchase, networking, even the meeting, as the professor has already said, sometimes we are not supposed to be here as we are now. Could have been here, the, the presenter has been somewhere. We're just communicating and networking. The teleconference, etc. etc. In that case, it is a challenge. The employer and employee need to be ready that yesterday is not today and tomorrow. Why? Because the need of yesterday is not the same as today. And for tomorrow, we need to advance. Thank, thank, thank you very much for the, for the insight. I think two very interesting things that uh, you've just said. Number one, uh, it's disappointing that several organizations may not look at human capital as uh, a very central part of their, of their business. And one of the reasons we're doing this uh, program, and as you can see, the theme here is people, the future of organizations. We're trying to get uh, businesses and organizations to really replace people at the center of what they're doing. I mean, as we're going into the future, um, uh, technology is coming in, but as technology is coming, I think maybe the professor will expand on this a bit more. I think people are playing a unique role. Operational things are going to machines, but there's still a unique role for human beings. So unless as, an organization, unless as an organization we take these people and we train them to have skills that they need to differentiate themselves from machines, 
then we'll find ourselves in a, in a place where we don't really have the human capital that we need. And I think another very important point that you brought up was adaptability. You kept referring to somebody in HR also doing marketing uh, and things like that. Um, and, and I think it's a, it's, a, it's a very important point. And maybe that will lead us to, to what I'm going to ask the professor to talk about, which is as we go into the future where there's a lot of change, change is now happening much faster. You know, the rate of what changed between 1950 and what... Uh, in 1960 and what changed between 2005 and 2007 is very different. So at a shorter time, a lot of things are changing. So it begs the question, which I think you brought up in your presentation, was how valuable is experience? Or what is its role, really? Maybe it's still valuable, but how do we really look at the value of experience if we're living in a world where things are changing very fast? Or maybe is adaptability a more desired you know, uh, quality to have in terms as we're going into the future. How exactly do we, do, we, do, we, do we position ourselves thinking about experience versus adaptability? Professor. Thank you. I, I think I had it somewhere in the slides, but I think I skipped. And I was actually questioning, and you are HR, you are, I call you hiring and firing manager. In your jobs requirement, you say experience two years. And I think it's time now, it's time in your template, you delete that. It's time you delete that, actually. It's time you delete it because, you know, we, we in, in, a, in a, because, you know, I insisted. I said, you know, no situation is permanent by change, but change. Now with real changes after, uh, happening every time, where do we get experience, actually? Change, change will, and even some, I've seen some students, or rather some job, job market interns complaining that, you know, this uh, employer wants us to have experience. Actually, with actual fourth industrial revolution, experience will no longer be in the vocabulary. Why? Because, as I said, uh, the changes that we are seeing today, they have never been that fast. Yet, they will never be so slow. They will never be so slow. It will be what I call a metanoia. You know, I did some Latin in my form one and form two, some 30 something years ago. <laughs> so I still remember it. So uh, you could see what we are going to see with the uh, technology what we'll need is exactly what I've been saying here, uh, adaptability. The capability to change yourself to situation at any point in time. Yeah? Uh, we are not sure about what is going to happen tomorrow, but you should be able to maneuver your way out to cope with whatever comes tomorrow. Even when we are talking about um, being future ready, uh, the emphasis is being future ready, whatever that future e is. Because sometimes I had a conversation with some students and I told them, you have to be future ready. They, you know, there's we are, my, my MBA student, uh, you know, they'll be graduate like two years. So they are preparing themselves for the skills that will be needed two years after they have graduated. I thought it's wrong. With, uh, with the, the speed with which changes are happening, really experience, yes, it might matter, it might matter, but really what will be is is to be able to adapt to any situation that comes. And again, as my colleagues have said, you really have to be multidisciplinary, really multidisciplinary. Gone will be those days when you train and, as HR, and you can only do HR, you know? That's, you know, going to, I am, you know, I'm a trained economist, actually, and uh, I do quite a lot of things, a lot of things that have nothing to do with economics. I, there was a time people thought that I was a medical doctor because I had done a lot on... Uh, uh, HIV AIDS related stuff, you know, but it's a question of learning because what we are saying is of course machine will be taking will be displacing labor Capital will be displacing labor now the question is the labor that is going to be displaced the human being that is going to be Unemployed, you know, where do you go? Where do you go? Do you go home? No, actually you should be able to find your maneuver and bounce back into the labor market So this has a lot of implication uh, that uh, when these changes are happening you might not be able to cope with exactly the, you know, the new technologies, but you have a way out. And to me, it's a challenge again to HR because you also have a responsibility to these staffs that you have stayed with for 10, 20, I don't know how many years. Uh, come October this year, Mzumbe would have stayed with me for 25 years, you know. Yeah, so the gray hair here has something to tell. So assume, assume technology displaces me. I think my employer has a responsibility to know, yes, I've been creating value for the past 25 years. Where do you place me? So that's, again, a challenge to you, HR, training and retraining these people so that they can cope with life, 
with or without capability of coping with new technology. Because it's, it's reality, it's not everybody who is going to be lady redundant who will be able to cope with technology. So we, it is a question of a HR with human face. I don't know. You know these things better than me. For, as economists, to me, I want to profit, profit, profit. But then the moment technology displaces labor, I think HR here have responsibility of making sure that uh, you have these people uh, taken care of. Uh, Dr. Irene, she's a social security, she's, she knows social, social security issue, issues. So because, you know, when these people are displaced, before they get employment, it's a cost to the economy. Are we, again, from social protection point of view, are we ready to cope with them? It, it might look utopia, a dream here, but I see those things coming. You know, when technology displaces a lot of pe uh, people, if we do nothing uh, to make them cope with the new life, again, we are going to suffer, those of us who think that we are safe. Because we cannot be safe if there is a huge group out there which is not safe. Thank you. Let's, let's give the professor a round of applause, please. Yeah, so thank, thank you, Professor, for the comments. The idea of taking experience out of a, um, job adverts is some people laugh because I think they find it a bit of a radical idea, but I think that's the future that we're going into. And as, unless we radically prepare the future, we just might not be ready for it because it's happening so fast, we need to take radical action for us to, to, to really be relevant as we, as we go into the future. Maybe one thing and then we come to the audience if we'll have any comments or questions. Um, we're talking about technology changing, right? And, and, and as one of the reasons we, we, we're talking about the future and, and why it's very important to pre be prepared for it is because technology is changing the, work, the, the landscape. But as technology is changing, the workforce is also changing, right? As we get into the future, the workforce is going to be mostly millennials. It's already happening. It's just going to get, you know, the, 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 average, the average working person is going to be younger and younger as we go into the future. And several studies have been done as to the needs of this um, uh, generation, these millennials and, and Gen Zs, uh, what exactly they want, what kind of work, workplace they, they, they need to be in. So perhaps uh, I'll ask Perusian and, 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 and Mr. James here to say a few things on what do you think as employers we should be doing to um, accommodate the needs of millennials uh, going into the future. As people managers, what should we have in mind uh, to help us really be future ready for the future that brings us a workforce of younger people than we used to have before? I think if there is a mistake we've done for quite a long time as HR is where we position ourselves. Most of us do not know that we are actually the CEOs of the organizations. And um, in that sense, uh, we do not really take our positions in the boardrooms and the management meetings. By, you know, when you, when you forget that you are actually driving the business, then you will not get to know what your business is all about. So then we remain in those corners of hiring and firing, and that's the biggest mistake we've done. And I liked when Prof said that actually, HR's time is gone when we only think of people and what we actually need to know what business is all about. If your company is a security company, then you need to know what it takes because then you'll be able to translate the language of business into people. And when you have that at heart, what does that mean? You'll be able to train and develop your people. HRs need to be coaches and need to understand. Actually, if there are only people who need to adapt more, it's us. Because we are the one who are hiring, we are the one who are developing, we are the one who are retaining, and, and it's all about us. So when we understand that, then we will know what time is it in our company. It's a technological time, it's a millennial's time, and we will be adaptable to accommodate and support them to be where their positions. Because if you don't do that, they'll chase you out of that desk. And let me tell you, much as sometimes we think, oh, people are losing their jobs, we are safe, we are not. By the time people are gone, you are redundant because why are you hired in the first place? So we need to first of all understand that these are the valuable assets we have and we take our time to develop them. We take our time to give them room 
And we take time to listen more than talking. We, we are more instructors than actually listeners. So we need to listen to their needs. We need to get out of our comfort corners in the bigger offices we have and get into the pool and understand what does the millennials need in their corners where they are seated so that we are able to advise, advise management that, look, these policies are actually not working for us anymore. These people do not need to come in a tie and a suit in the office. They need jeans. They actually need phones which are flexible to allow them to do their work. They need tablets, oh man. And in that way, we'll be able to see more results than just putting them into these corners. This generation can't sit in the office eight hours. So when you allow them flexi time and we support them in that way, they'll go out there, they'll be more productive. But another thing, when we listen to them, these are the generation that are actually bringing changes through innovations. They will tell you things until you wonder, hey, where did you get that? And as you struggle with translation of a word, they are Googling, you know? They know it all. So sometimes we dictate, but we dictate to people who knows it better than us. I remember when my daughter picks my phone, some of the apps I don't even know how to use. She's just a class six, and she knows it inside out. So what do we then do? We need to, much as we guide and we coach and mentor, but we also listen and give them room to grow and support them. And I think that's what we should do. And otherwise, then the time will catch up with us badly. Yeah.